yeah, it's going to be bigger than Y2K. You'll be hearing about it. There's going to be a lot of business in being an IPv6 consultant. If you want career stability, I will tell you there's no better field to be in. Other questions before I move across? Yes. How long are we going to have to maintain V4 and V6 on the public internet? Five to ten years. Okay? We won't have people actually connect servers, servers with a V6 only address if we can get so much as one IPv4 address to put on that server. Okay? But even that's going to run out eventually. So five to ten years. And then what will happen is we'll end up inverting the model. We'll have companies that say, I don't want to do a dual stack. I'm sick of maintaining this. I've enabled V6 to my desktops because that's the next step, obviously, is you push V6 down to your desktops. At some point, five, ten years from now, you're going to say, I'm done with V4. I'm turning it off. I'm putting a gateway at the edge that will translate my V6 users to V4. And if I get a business that's having a trouble, I'm going to tell them, look, get off the friggin', you know, Telex, you know, get to the modern age, uh, turn on V6. But that you cannot going to have that until 2020. Okay? Sure. Oh, so um, there is something that's going to happen that's very cool with IPv4 addresses. So Aaron's going to start telling people, we don't have any. Yep, we know you need it. You got approved. We can see your demand, but we don't have any. It will be possible to transfer addresses. This is an approved policy from someone who has addresses to someone who needs addresses where we've approved their need. You'll be able to do that transfer, i.e., there's going to be addresses on eBay at some point. But the only party who can get those addresses is someone who's applied for address space and been turned down, not because they have the need. They've been approved for their need, but we didn't have the addresses to give them. That gives you a chit. I'm qualified to get a slash 21. I'm going on eBay to find it. So I do expect the addresses that are coming off that people don't need will very quickly be sucked up by people who still want to use V4. Other questions? Yes. Mobile devices. Wow. So um, as it turns out, um, this is one of my ‑‑ I've been dealing with uh, the uh, three and fourth generation network projects. Um, a lot of the mobile devices actually have IPv4, IPv6 in them, okay? Um, I, I actually posted on Facebook the other day a picture because my iPhone, of course, is V6 capable. If I happen to get on a wireless network with, uh, amazingly, they call it iOS, iOS 4. If you happen to get on Apple's iOS 4 with your phone, phone and uh, you're on a Wi-Fi network that gives out V6 addresses, you'll get a wireless V6 address. It works, okay? Um, there's a lot of devices that support IPv6 in the wireless. The problem is on the network side, the carrier gear has not done this. Now, about two years ago, I met with most of the carriers and most of the standards organizations and I said the odds of you getting V4 allocations past 2010 is pretty much zero. Um, they know this is coming. I know that uh, Verizon, for example, their LTE, their next generation project, they announced the handsets for their new project. All of them must support V6, must assume that a V6 address is assigned. They optionally can support V4. Optionally, okay? So that's going to switch over in the next two to three years. Most people will have no idea that's happening. Just like you don't know when you're sitting behind a, a, a NAT right now, other than the fact that you see a private address, a lot of people using their cell phone have no idea what IP address they've gotten. They're going to get a V6 one and for now go through a V6 to V4 gateway. Okay, um, I think we're overdone and have to evacuate the room. I'll go over to Capri 114 for anyone else who has questions. Thank you very much.